Okay, friends, Lucas Sorelli is here. A lot of you asking me to see uh, the creative process uh, of my last image, and uh, I'm really glad to show you step by step uh, all the things I did during my retouching workflow. This is a picture from my recent editorial with uh, my Amazon friend Yinse Young and uh, Virna Gambini. We was in Rome in a historical villa. Uh, I decided to change uh, literally everything in the picture. I, as I told you, I don't know exactly why, but most of the time when I'm shooting the image I get uh, is the beginning of my work, it's not the end. Because I want to be, every time I want to be always more creative. So when I work, I try to create something special, totally different from reality, more fantasy, fairy tale, artistic, like uh, painterly photography, for example. This is the final image, but the image in the reality, it wasn't like this. This was two different images that I mixed to get a unique image, just like this. Because here, if we see in Capture One, look at that. In this picture, I have the image of Jinsei. Look the hand, look the, the face, look. This is Jinsei. But Virna is different. Look at that. She's not the same because this is the image I choose for Virna. Look. But it's not Yensei. So what I did was to select Yensei and select Virna and mix them together. Look at that. Here I have placed Virna and here you can see Yensei. It's not the same and it's not the same. In this case, it, it was really simple because with the <laughs> selection brush here, select subject, you can select the, the part of the image you want. In this case, Yinsei and in this case, uh, Virna. So it was really to place Yinsei here. And this is a realistic result. And for most photographers, it could be the final step of the work. It's obvious you can retouch the image in this case, uh, it's, it's retouched, yes, okay. But other things you can do is it's coloring the image with action, with panels, with adjustment layers, okay. But I decided also to make the image in a landscape format to give more romance, to give more impact to the image. So what I did was to recreate a totally different background like this. I created this image in Midjourney, but the trick was that I upscaled this image with Magnifique AI. And to understand the power of this amazing software, you have to see the differences. Okay, this is Magnifique AI. For those of you that don't know Magnifique AI, it is a great upscaler that makes really the difference. Because look at that. This was the original image I created in Midjourney version 6. It's good, but it's not powerful enough. It was not so rich in terms of details, but look after the upscale. Look the vegetation here. Look the difference here in the plants, in the foliages. And now look on the floor here on the terrain. Look at that. And look here. No details completely. Look, the ivy here. Look. The improvements in the image are amazing. Look at that, this part is totally clear. Now it's sharpened. So you understand that it's, it's a great value that you can add to your image using a Magnific AI. This is the image upscaled with Magnific AI. And then if you see, I want to show you another thing. The selection I did of Virna and Yinsei. If you see, selection is not perfect, but it doesn't matter. Look at that. 
Okay. I painted with a brush some hairs here to add more reality. But if you see, selection is not perfect, but when you add, boom, the background, things are changing. Look, another important trick is that if you look at here, you will see effect color overlay. But this was the original color of the models. This, but look at that. The color is completely different. So this is the reason why I add the color overlay with the blend overlay blending mode. Look, because in this case, you can go here and pick all around. Look at that. You can choose a color of the background and then you can refine. Here until you find the perfect mix between the model and the background. This was my selection, 41% opacity. And as you can see, look at that. Now the models are merged with the background. This is the first thing you have to do if you want to understand if the compositing you are going to do can be real or not. After that, I started adding some magic. Look, what is this? It's a transparent PNG that you can find on the internet, you can buy in different uh, websites. In fact, most of the time I work with the uh, transparent PNGs. Because look at that, they add a lot of uh, magic. I can uh, create my original scenes mixing different PNG, different layers of PNG. Also, in this case, the original was this, the original. But with a, a curves layer with clipping mask, I balanced the luminosity, making real and totally merged with the background. Same things for this, for this and for this. And now the scene is changing. Look at that. Before, after, before, after. I'm adding some magic to the scene. Same things for this. I love to create a 3D effect. So uh, I love to have uh, some blurred layers in front of the image to give a three-dimensionality effect to the scene, like in the reality. And uh, this is one layer here. I had that also. Look at that. Another transparent PNG file with roses. Same things. The original roses was this. Totally <laughs> different from the background, but with the layer curve and the use saturation adjustment layer, I made the color like the background. Another layer of roses, another layer of roses too. I created a black and white adjustment layer with luminosity. Blending modes just to balance the luminosity of the colors on the image. Then I added a really, a really beautiful transparent PNG. In reality, these are two different PNGs that I mix it to get this effect. But I did the same thing. Look at that. This was the original. And this is the reason why I suggest you to be creative because with creativity, you can do everything you want. So the, um, the PNG was, was, uh, was really good for me, but was totally different. But a first layer with curves, a second layer with adjustment layer, use saturation adjustment layer, and a color balance adjustment layer, another additional curves adjustment layer, I made the magic. And I created a tonality of greens similar to this or this. But the difference is outstanding. Look, boom, boom. 
in this case I covered some parts of the selection or here on the foot of, uh, of Birna where the selection was not so perfect because in the reality here I had some foliages that was covering the fingers and so with this level I reduced the problem and then I love to have um, out of focus elements here also on the dress just to simulate the reality then I added another out of focus here on the bottom right here on the left another out of focus element look a transparent PNG file that simulates the sunlight and then I used the molten air action by only the curious just a subdoll adjustment to give golden reflections here on the scene with a 17 opacity not so much but it was enough for me a curves adjustment layer also to to reduce just just a little the shadows and then also I added some fog these elements are really, really helpful because they simulate perfectly reality. Look at that, before, the before and the after. Before and the after. Just two layers with about 20% opacity here, 74% opacity, just to add reality, more reality to the scene. And antique matte, is an action from Jessica Drossin that I use most of the time to simulate uh, a matte effect that I love so much because um, this effect makes the image more romantic in my opinion and most of the time I use this, uh, this kind of actions for my images I merged all the layers on top And then I created a new, a new layer filled with 50% uh, gray. Probably at the moment you can't see the differences, but this was the work I did. I painted with, uh, with white to add more luminosity to the, to the hairs of Virna and Ginsei. I merged again all the layers on top. In this case, I use the Nikon Color Effects Pro, Pro Contrast, but you can use also the uh, new curves adjustment layer to give the color contrast to the image. Look, look the difference. A curves adjustment layer again. And then I added A transparent PNG of plant shadows just to simulate the reality of the shadows that was coming from the plants over there in uh, in reality it was so flat the dress so I decided to cover with some shadows a selective color adjustment layer just to modify the balance of the colors a vibrance adjustment layer to give more vibrance to colors a curves again another curves adjustment layer and then I use the infinite color panel for uh, global color final adjustments and this is the final image remember we started we started from this to get this I really hope that you will find interesting my creative process, my workflow, and uh, let me know what do you think, if you do the same, if you do different things, if you have different methods, or if you work mixing um, artificial intelligence, photography, and what do you think about this technique? Do you think it could be interesting and useful for your workflow or not? I think this is the best way to work with artificial intelligence and uh, photography because I think artificial intelligence can be really, really helpful in the creative process. If you know the rules of the compositing, you will find interesting working in this way.
So I hope you will try to do this and let me know about your progress and any questions I'm here to answer to you. Okay, bye friends and thank you for watching me.